Greetings, adventurous travelers and fellow keepers of the lake. How are you all doing? Do you ever find yourself in a situation where you have a lot of moving parts in a social sense? You have each player have maybe some personal connections with other players, other NPCs, maybe some monsters, maybe some factions. And in the middle of all of the happenings, you kind of put too much onto one player or too little onto another player. There's some new loot that arrived today and while looking at all these wonderful cult things I started like going through the the old book just to, to remind myself of the mechanics a little bit and I remembered that I promised I will do a video on intrigue maps. So intrigue maps, they are basically relationship maps. On the screen you will see an example of the intrigue map. And this is something that I found in Cult, but it also exists in Vampire the Masquerade, I think it's 5th edition. I don't know if this is something that's part of the Powered by the Apocalypse system or not, or is it just something that kind of independently arose from both of these games, maybe one borrowed it from the other, so I, I don't know the specifics. But the intrigue map was very useful in a couple of uh, sessions that I ran, because I was subconsciously putting too many things onto one player when the other one was almost without connections and the connections that that person had were like tiny in comparison to some other players. You start making it by having uh, your players in the center and try to connect the players in between themselves and add maybe what you perceive as a DM or even better if the players tell you maybe how they perceive or how they feel towards another character, make a map of that and then start from there. Then a good thing is in Cult, for example, and for those who don't know, I have a whole video explaining what Cult is. You can find it in the description on the screen everywhere at the end of the video. So uh, it is a horror game where one of the concepts that I want to mention here is that characters have dark secrets. And this is something that you don't say to other players, but it's something that greatly influences how you will be perceiving the world, especially if the GM is using those to invoke some uh, scary scenery. With having those dark secrets, you add them to this intrigue map. Almost instantly you have something to work with. You see like the relation in between players and how their dark secrets could influence those relationships between the characters. But then stop making the map. Have the first session, I mean this is something that is depending if you're doing like a fantasy and you just want to use the tool or you, you're doing horror. If you're doing horror, it would make sense to make conspiracies by making the map in, in advance. But if you're doing fantasy, for example, then it makes more sense for you to just leave it be for the first session and then come back to it once the players have interacted with people and actually made some connections. I have uh, great news for you, for me, actually. I've been a player for a change and our DM started the session with us getting like a piece of paper with information about uh, some notable NPCs and we were supposed to like go through them and pick some friends, some enemies, some that are indifferent to us. This is a great thing to use the intrigue map for so you would catch out the relatives, friends, maybe a guild or two, uh, maybe some monster is stalking your players so you add that to the map as well so you will get this sprawling map from which you can craft maybe some encounters social encounters on the go and you can like plot deeper conspiracies with i know that the concept itself is very straightforward I i'm sure that most of you have some form of like a mind map when it comes to factions and runehammer has the circle method very similar to like a circular mind map i will link that in the description too so people have been doing this in in a bunch of different ways for forever but in this sense i think it didn't cross my mind that i can use a mind map for this so this is my best attempt to explain to you that it exists and for you to try it out now when we look at the book so it says right here, the intrigue map is a tool for gems to use during the course of the story. It makes the form of a web for, of people, places uh, which are connected to the characters. So what does cult claim you should put in your intrigue map? Each node in the, this graph, they call a hub. And what are hubs? Well, basically you put the player characters into the map. As you can see the, in the example on the screen, then you have events, so any major occurrences that are affecting the PCs or the story as a whole. This is something that I said is dark secrets in cult. Then some places, maybe 
uh, you, your PC has a house that should be inherited or some like major landmarks for the characters, you add that in as well. For my players, they had a tavern that they were very connected to and it was kind of as the centerpiece of the whole first season of our campaign. So this is something that I would for sure put into the intrigue map and maybe I would like remember it 20 sessions after and, and use it for something, which it didn't, but I should have. Probably. So then put any like very, very notable objects. I wouldn't litter the map with like a lot of objects, but like artifacts, magical things that are like game changing. Then if you're playing maybe Call of Cthulhu or you're playing Cult or something like that, you would put maybe some police evidence, things like that, like objects that can very much change the course of the story in a meaningful way. Then there are leaders, which are basically just like leader of the guild, the king of the city. If your characters and players have notable relationships with some powerful individuals, you would consider those leaders and you would put them into the intrigue map. So not every merchant that they have had a good deal with, but the merchant that can get you pretty much anything you want for a right price. That's a good contact that goes into the intrigue map. Then they mention organizations and groups. And I think uh, in terms of that, I would consider them one uh, thing. So any faction or a group of people that are under a certain name, that is basically a faction. So not the factions that you know exist, but the factions that your players have some form of connection to. Then you should consider adding any like relatives or friends. I mean, it makes sense. You would for sure add those. But again, don't overdo it. Don't add everyone that they know. And for this, I would focus on emotional value. So leaders are uh, those NPCs that are useful to the players or that have some like something against the players or something like that. They're there to like push the story in a like more mechanical way, maybe a more like political way where contacts would be like family members that push the story in an emotional way. So I would add like a little asterisk on it. Uh, then you have monsters and yeah, this works the best when you have, for example, like in Cult, a monster that is hunting you for a while and the players might not know that they are being hunted by the monster, but you have like, each of the players has something that is following hunting uh, or like stalking them or there is like a deeper darkness that is tied to them, things like that. So anything that is like a perceived paranormal uh, threat to, to the characters. And for uh, links between these, well, just write um, supports, doesn't support, is hunted by, just litter it with verbs and like keep it short, keep it like one to two words, don't go overboard because you have to glance at this and instantly know what you're gonna do with the map. And why I think this is useful, even if you're not gonna use it in the play, it will give you an idea of your distribution of things that are happening to your players, which sometimes subconsciously, especially people that like me are not like very experienced in DMing would like miss maybe. They would have some biases towards maybe uh, one player and not the other or one character and not the other depending on their personality. Let's look at another example. Let's uh, zoom into the picture here and this is the picture from the cults book and I know it, it might be confusing at first because uh, for example the Avenger, the Seeker, the Detective and the Artist, those are archetypes or let's say something similar to classes in cult. So yeah, those are the players. And you can see here the seeker uh, looks up to the Avenger. This is something that you might come up with before the session. Then you see in between the detective and the artist, currently there is nothing. So they're not uh, really related in any way. You can certainly like ask them if they want to be and add it here. Everything that is like on the sides, that is something that other players don't know about this uh, character, so the detective has some forbidden knowledge. You would be more specific in, for, let's say, D&D or something like that. You would write knows about that and that, just as a reminder for yourself. Um, then you have the artist, which is uh, in the pact with the dark forces. You would maybe come to your player and ask on, on the session zero, like, do you want to be like a part of a conspiracy? For the Seeker, it is a bit uh, more convoluted. So you have the event that has like some occult experience. Maybe he was fighting a cult with, uh, with like a local uh, guard or something. And you see here, participated sister contact. So maybe in that fight, his sister participated in it or she was like a double agent or something. So you see here, there is a house and, and like uh, an address 
because the cult is in the modern setting. So in this place, they probably defeated the cult or something and the entity was released that is now haunting the seeker. You see how, how this is uh, like firing my brain. I am coming up with this on the spot. I don't know these characters. I don't know their story. And I know that probably occult experience here is probably the seeker was inside a cult or something like that. I just wanted to switch it a bit upside down so it doesn't sound that dark. But yeah, basically, even if you like write a bunch of random things, your mind can work with visual stuff and you will like start to make connections. And the Avenger, yeah, um, I will leave the Avenger as homework for you to figure out if you can like connect these in a meaningful story. So I hope you find this intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you find this intriguing or useful in any way, consider moving your eyeballs down and finding finding this logo and, and, and next to it should be a subscribe button. Please click that button if you want to uh, support what I'm doing. It really means a lot. It makes my little heart warm and it grows the community. And so far the community has been amazing and, and I am really, really, really uh, thankful for all the all the feedback that I'm getting. Leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, and check out my other links. And I think this is the first video that I've said <laughs> all of that in. And as always, keep on going, keep on loving, keep on being creative, play more DD, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell, keepers.